we talked about a kind of an introduction of violent volcanoes in the last lesson. Now we're going to get into our violent volcano types. We're going to start with stratovolcanoes. Also can call them composite volcanoes. So stratovolcanoes are composite volcanoes. Same thing. You can use those words interchangeably. Composite or stratovolcanoes are just steep sided volcanoes built of alternating layers of lava and pyroclastics. They erupt explosively because the gases are trapped and the pressure builds. Okay, why are they steep sided? They're steep sided because the lava is high viscosity. Remember when we talked about shield volcanoes? And we said, we said the shield volcanoes were very gently sloping because when the lava erupted, it ran down the sides of the volcano all the way to the ocean. Stratovolcanoes are going to be very steep because when the lava erupts, it can't run all the way down the side of the volcano before it dries. Also, it's not always going to have lava. Lots of times, they're going to have pyroclastics too, as we see in our definition. They're steep side volcanoes built of alternating layers of lava and pyroclastics. So we see in the picture, and we're going to draw a picture in a little bit, but we see these alternating layers. Sometimes it erupts lava, sometimes it erupts pyroclastics. It alternates. In this picture here, you can see the same thing. You have some pyroclastic eruptions, you have some, uh, some lava eruptions. You have some lava eruptions and pyroclastic eruptions. So, Again, the why, okay, why is steep side? Because the lava is high viscosity. And then we just went over kind of at the end of the last unit, or last section, why is the lava high viscosity? Because it's felsic and it's cooler. Remember the picture we had of the ocean plate and the continental plate and the difference between them. So kind of thinking, remembering that picture, where are we going to have these stratovolcanoes then? Well, they're going to be at subduction zones. Let me show you this animation. For that, so simple, simple picture. We have our ocean plate subducting underneath our continental plate. As it subducts underneath, some of the water gets dragged into it, so it's going to have a lot of water vapor in it, a lot of gas essentially, a lot of pressure. It's going to melt the rock. The rock is less dense, so it's going to rise up through the rest of the rock. It's going to then uh, explode. That gas pressure propels it to the surface. So as the lava rose up, there's less and less pressure from above. So the, the gas that was in it, a lot of that water that was in it, that gas is going to expand. And the pressure is going to build and build and build until the rock isn't strong enough to hold in the pressure. And it's going to explode violently, as you see here. Right? And then you might have some lava come out or you might have the pyroclastic come out. Okay, so these are going to be at subduction zones. Here again, we see this one. This is for the Cascades, like Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. We have the ocean plate subducting underneath the continental plate. It's going to work in some water. It's going to melt down here in the asthenosphere. Less dense is going to rise. As it rises up, there's less and less pressure. So those gases are going to expand. Eventually, the pressure is too great that the rocks can't handle it, and it's going to explode violently. The Ring of Fire, you probably heard of the Ring of Fire, so I just wanted to put it in this section because this is where it fits. The Ring of Fire is a string of subduction zone volcanoes that surrounds the Pacific Ocean. So all surrounding the Pacific Ocean, these are all subduction zone volcanoes. They're all violent volcanoes. We have the Andes Mountains down here. We have like Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens here, Mount McKinley up here, Japan. We have like Mount Fuji. We have all these ones in the Philippines, like Krakatoa, uh, the ones in New Zealand um, going down here. So this ring of violent volcanoes surrounding the Pacific Ocean. Okay, let's draw our diagram of our stratovolcano. So go ahead, flip your paper over. Label it stratovolcano. So that we're going to label our picture stratovolcano. 
Let's just draw our picture. We're going to draw a pretty simple picture. This time you're going to draw it more steep than the shield volcano. So our shield volcano is gently sloping. This one is not. So I'm going to draw a very steep volcano, put a depression at the top, like that. Put your pipe going down the middle. All right. The main pipe from the magma chamber to the summit is going to be called the conduit still. So if you want to go ahead and label it conduit, go ahead. Same part as we had with the other one. Can the top get plugged up like it did with the shield volcano? Sure. Then the lava is going to go out through a dike, just like we had in the last picture, onto a fissure or a side vent. So we're going to still have our side vent here. So far, we're all pretty much the same. Okay. Thing to change, maybe, let's put some alternating layers here. So go ahead and put some alternating layers, like that. Go ahead, so those are alternating layers. Of lava and pyroclastic. Alternating layers. Uh, lava and pyroclastic. But remember, these don't explode um, every time. Sometimes they do have lava too. So alternate layer, lava and pyroclastic. So then the only other real difference that we've had is the top here. We're going to call it a crater. Now it could be a caldera too, okay? But I want to make the difference since we haven't talked about it yet. So there we have a crater, that depression at the top. I'm going to put some pyroclastic shooting out so we know that. Too. So there are some pyroclastic. So we know that it's a crater. Pyroclastics. Basically, a crater, again, is the depression at the top of the volcano, but this time the top blew out instead of collapsing in. Now, could a stratovolcano have a top that collapsed in? Sure. We call it a caldera. But I just wanted to put the crater on here so you knew that term also. So I'm going to say um, the top blew out, and we're calling that a crater. That's our picture of our stratovolcano. You know, it's really pretty simple. It's similar to the shield volcano. It's just a little steeper. We have the alternating layers. We have the pyroclastic flying out, and we have our crater. The other part that you have on your sheet there is a neck. And now a neck is after the volcano is already extinct. All right, so it's after the volcano is already extinct. So I'm just going to draw a simple little picture here for a neck. So here's the ground, and here is my stratovolcano like that. The conduit, going down here, the conduit was solid rock up to wherever it was when it blew up or when it went extinct. So that was solid rock. But remember, the outsides of the volcano. That's made of alternating layers of lava and pyroclastics. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just putting dots on here, showing that that's like the pyroclastics ash. So this volcano now is extinct. Over millions of years, what's going to happen to this volcano? What's going to start to erode away? So the wind, the water, freezing, thawing, it's all going to start to erode this volcano away. What's going to erode more quickly? The solid plug of rock here or the ash on the outside, that pyroclastic on the outside? The pyroclastics, because they're loose, they get stripped away by the water and the wind. So over time, what you're left with is just the rock spine from the conduit sticking up out of the ground. Everything else has been eroded away. And that's what we call a neck. Okay, so that there is the neck. So it's the rock spine from the conduit after the rest of the volcano has been eroded away. And I'm going to show you some pictures of them. Here's a picture of ship rock. This is in New Mexico, so famous, famous neck in New Mexico. And going to it, this is a dike. Okay, because the dike, if it had a dike going, let's say I put a dike in there. The dike could also be exposed. I'll put one at the ground level like that. 
the dike was solid rock too. So that might be exposed. Some other pictures here. So here's Shiprock again. You see how huge it is. Here's the road. This is a, a huge volcano. The size of the volcano were going beyond these dikes. So it would have been an enormous volcano. You know, somewhere way up here. Huge volcano. This is what's left of the conduit, the neck. And these are dikes. So you can see when we defined the dike, we said a tube or sheet. Here you can see how it is like a sheet. If I go back up, it's like a sheet. Right? Not very thick sheet of rock. So it could be a tube or sheet of rock. Some other examples, we have Boar's Tooth and Devil's Tower. Uh, it's again, some interesting ones. Again, the solid rock. And this is where the rest of the volcano is gradually eroding away, leaving behind the neck. These are in France, kind of neat. They have this monastery built on the top of one of these necks. You can see some other pictures with them all around. Um, you want to get the high ground, of course, for defense and also, of course, be closer to God. So kind of impressive there. The last topic for um, the stratovolcanoes before we get to just our other types are the hazards. So why are these things so dangerous? They're dangerous because of their pyroclastic flows, mainly. Pyroclastic flows are clouds of hot pyroclastics and gases erupted from the volcano. Okay, so clouds of hot pyroclastics and gases erupted from the volcano. They are very fast, they're very hot, and they have poisonous gases. So kind of three very bad things about them. They're very fast, they're very hot, and they're poisonous. There are two types of pyroclastic flows. Nue Ardance, there should be an accent, I think, so that one. Nue Ardance and surges. A Nue Ardance is a lateral pyroclastic flow. Okay, lateral pyroclastic flow. What that means is it's going to come out the side of the volcano. Okay, a lateral pyroclastic flow, it's going to come out the side of a volcano. I don't have too much room to draw here, but a good example is Mount St. Helens. That's what happened. So if I had Mount St. Helens kind of like this, okay, there's Mount St. Helens. Had a magma chamber down here. That magma chamber actually worked its way up into the mountain. So the magma chamber kind of worked itself up here. The north side of Mount St. Helens bulged out. So there was like a big goiter on the side of Mount St. Helens on the north side. Then there was an earthquake, a magnitude 5.2 earthquake, caused that, that bulge on the north side to landslide down. So it landslid down to a big pile here that left an opening there, so it released the pressure. So the Nuea Ardant blasted right out the side, like that. Okay, really fast blast out the side. Some of these have been recorded to go over 700 miles per hour. Hot, fast, poisonous gases. Okay, it's lateral one. These are the most dangerous type because they might be blasting right at you. You see the guy running here in the little. Um, Japanese fire truck trying to get away. Very dangerous, blasted right out the side. Um, so this was a, what happened with Mount St. Helens. It happened with Unzen in this picture here. A surge is a vertical pyroclastic flow. So instead of going out the side, it's going to go vertically. Uh, we'll talk more about Vesuvius, but Vesuvius was a good example of that. So let's say that's Vesuvius. It erupted vertically. It had a big, huge cloud up here. It was hot. It then fell, and it kind of fell as a ring around the volcano, kind of like a donut around the volcano. And the surge went out and destroyed everything. You know, you think of Pompeii. So kind of Pompeii would be on this side, and Herculaneum over on this side. Okay, so that was Mount Vesuvius, had a surge with a vertical one. Uh, Mount Pinatubo, we're going to see a video on that. That was another vertical one. So a surge is a vertical pyroclastic flow. Nue Ardant is a lateral pyroclastic flow. Uh, then we have a, a lahar. A lahar is just a mud flow on a volcano. Very dangerous also. Think of it almost like sometimes if it's really thick, it's almost like a, a liquid concrete 
moving down a valley, destroying everything in its path. So Lahar, very dangerous. We'll see uh, a video of the city of Armero um, that was, uh, in the middle of the night, covered up in a Lahar. And an amazing amount of people died. I think it was somewhere in the 20,000 or so um, number of people died. We'll see a video of that that shows some of that aftermath. Um, but Lahar is very, very dangerous too. Uh, definitely a hazard in these volcanoes. Some volcano examples you can write down. Most of the ones that you can think of probably. Um, anything from Mount St. Helens. Here's a before and after of Mount St. Helens. Another one is uh, Mount St. Helens. Mount Rainier. Okay, here's the city of Seattle and here's Mount Rainier moving in the background. Kind of a dangerous position. We'll talk more about that too. So Mount Rainier is a good example. Mount Fuji or Fujiyama in Japan is a good example. Uh, Mount Pinatubo, we're going to watch the video on that, is a good example. Krakatoa is a good example. So there are lots of really good examples of stratovolcanoes or composite, you know, composite stratovolcanoes. And that's really it for stratovolcanoes. I said there are, there is another type of violent volcano. It's called a cinder cone. We're going to talk very quickly about that on the next lesson when we talk about just our other types of volcanoes.